will have no tax on overtime. And no tax on social security benefits for our great seniors. No tax. And it makes sense because the seniors have been hurt so badly with inflation. So we're going to have no tax on Social Security for our seniors. And while working Americans catch up, we're going to put a temporary cap on interest rates on credit card debt at 10 percent. Some people are paying 25 and 30 percent. It's crazy. You know, in theory, that's against the law. OK, called the usury laws. But in theory, that's against. So we're going to cap it for a period of time at 10 percent. This election is about the economy. This election is about the border. That's what it is. And I am your border president. Your border president. Kamala would be your invasion president. She would be your country destroying president. But remember this, look on the border. In 2016, we had a bad border. I fixed it. And it was so good that I couldn't mention it in 2020, even though, excuse me, I might say, we got millions more votes in 2020 than we did in 2016, right? Some bad crap happened. Some bad things happened. We got millions and millions of more votes. So what a disgrace. Think of our country, if I were president. You wouldn't have Ukraine, Russia. That wouldn't happen. You wouldn't have any inflation. You wouldn't have had the attack on Israel. And you wouldn't have had the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. And that's the way they withdrew from Afghanistan. None of this would have happened and a lot of other good things. We would be energy independent. We were already energy independent. We were going to be energy dominant by now. More than Russia, more than more than anything. We have more than Russia. We have more than Saudi Arabia, more oil. We have more than anybody. I call it liquid gold. We have more liquid gold under our feet. And what do we do? We go to Venezuela to get oil, to get tar. They sell us tar that we refine in our country, in Houston, Texas, not a pretty sight. As border czar Kamala Harris has allowed 21 million illegals to pour in from all over the world. They're coming from the prisons and the jails. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're terrorists and she's letting literally at record levels, terrorists are pouring into our country. Did you see the chart? Four years ago, we had 11 terrorists come in and we got them, everyone. Now we have thousands of terrorists in our country and the worst terrorists from the worst countries. Here in North Carolina, migrant crime is totally out of control, encouraged by sanctuary jurisdictions, sanctuary cities all across your state. In July, an illegal alien who borders our Harris released, she released him, special order, into our country, was arrested for stalking a woman into a public bathroom in Charlotte and attempting to rape her and ultimately rape her and hurt her very badly. Here in Wilmington last month, an illegal alien from Venezuela brutally stabbed a man to death. This murder came just four days after he was arrested for horrible domestic violence. But instead of being deported, this criminal alien was released to kill again, kill again he did. And in June, a fugitive illegal alien criminal from Honduras was arrested after savagely murdering a 23-year-old in the sanctuary jurisdiction of Mecklenburg. Every, anybody come from Mecklenburg County? You read about it, that was a big one, that was a bad one, nasty, nasty. Today I'm announcing a new plan to end all sanctuary cities in North Carolina and all across our country. No more sanctuary cities. Uncle Sam, do you agree? Uncle Sam agrees. I had a feeling you would, right? You're great. As soon as I take office, we will immediately surge federal law enforcement to every city that is failing, which is a lot of them, to turn over criminal aliens, and we will hunt down, capture every single gang member, drug dealer, rapist, murderer, and migrant criminal that is being illegally harbored. Every one of the top 25 worst cities are Democrat-run cities. We will get them out of North Carolina and we will send them home where they belong. 
I will ask Congress to pass a law outlawing sanctuary cities nationwide, and we will bring down the full weight of the federal government on any jurisdiction that refuses to cooperate with ICE and our great — these are great patriots, ICE and Border Patrol and our great Border Patrol. They're not allowed — they're not allowed to do their job. They want to do their job. They're not allowed. Within two years, there will not be one single foreign criminal gang operated in North Carolina or anywhere else. You have a lot of gangs. Hate to say it. You have a lot of gangs in this state. Are there any gang members in the audience, please? Would you please raise your hand? So that's the choice. Kamala Harris will fly criminal migrants into every one of your cities and towns. Did you see that? They say, well, we've decided to get tough on crime. You know, like two weeks ago, because they want to try and get some votes because they're not doing so good. This issue is not a good one for them. But did you see? And then we learned that they're flying them in in beautiful, big, fat, beautiful Boeing aircraft, just like that one, with more seats, actually. I have fewer seats in mind than they do. But they fly them in with beautiful aircraft. They fly them all over the country by the hundreds of thousands. They're flying in over the border. So they don't want to stop them because they're continuing the flights into our country. I will get every migrant criminal out of our country and I'll get them out fast. We have to. We have no choice. And they're taking over our country. You see what they're doing. Kamala Harris's border invasion is also crushing the jobs and wages of African-American workers and Hispanic-American workers and also union members. Unions are next. You watch. They are working and hurting what, what's going on with African-American workers and with Hispanic in particular. It, it just they're taking your jobs. They're taking your jobs. Every job produced in this country over the last two years has gone to illegal aliens. Every job. Think of it. We are what we're doing to this country is so sad. You know, I stand up here. Thank you. Thank you. You're right about that. We'll save you. We're going to save you. We're going to save you. We're going to save you. No, we're going to save you. But it is sad. Young guy, I don't know where the hell he is. There are a lot of people out here. But when he screams, you've got to save us, President Trump, that we need to scream like that, that you would think in this country that you even need something like that. It's very sad, but we're going to save you. We will. We did it once. We're going to do it again, and we're going to do it at even a higher level, an even higher level. That's one of the big reasons why I just won the overwhelming endorsement of the rank and file membership of the Teamsters. They voted for Trump. They voted for Trump. Last month, American board workers lost, think of this, 1.3 million jobs. So American voters uh, and their voters, American workers lost 1.3 million jobs. Meanwhile, the migrants picked up 635,000 jobs plus another seven or 800,000 jobs at least that we know of. But the Americans lost jobs. What a disgrace. I don't, I don't even, you know, you, you read some of this and you hear the facts. You find it hard to believe it could be happening, actually, because, you know, the Republican Party has become a party of common sense. I call it the party of common sense. We're conservative. We're all of the same. But it's a become a party. Where is the common sense in open borders and high taxes and the job numbers that I just read to you? Even Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said this week, quote, the influx across the borders has been one of the things that has allowed unemployment to rise and rise substantially. To save your jobs, you must vote for Trump. Very simple. Very simple. So in the latest Rasmussen poll just out, thank you. Remember, I used to talk about the polls, right? I used to talk about the polls, and I forgot about it because I won the primaries by so much, I didn't have to talk about them. But in the latest uh, Rasmussen poll, you know what happened with Joe? We beat him by, I think, 21 points, and they said, you got to get out, you can't win, and he got out. So now I got a second race. This never happened. I went, think of it, spent $100 million on beating Joe, and we beat him. And he couldn't win, and they went to him, and they said, you can't win, you're out. 
You're not supposed to say that to a president. But they said, Joe, you're out. Get out of here, Joe. And they really, they, they took it over. He got 14 million votes and she got none. And then they never thought she was going to get it. But it turned out that she got it because they wanted to be politically correct. She didn't get one vote. She didn't win one primary. She was the first one to quit the race when they had 22 candidates where Biden won it. But in the latest Rasmussen poll against her, just came out, we're eight points up. In the New York Times, in the New York Times, Sienna Paul, can you believe New York Times, they can't be happy. We're nine points up in the Midwest alone. In the Emerson poll, highly respected. We're three up in Georgia and leading Arizona by a lot, Wisconsin by a lot, and I think we're really doing well in Pennsylvania. That's what the word is. But remember, don't get too carried away. They cheat. That's what they do. They cheat. Too big to rig. We got to get out there. Everybody's got to vote. And in the American Greatness Poll, we're beating Kamala by three here in a place called North Carolina. And one that's very exciting, a poll just came out where we're actually leading in the state of Virginia, which no Republican has won in many, many, a long time. But take nothing for granted. You have to get out and vote. You just have to get out and vote. We cannot accept it. We, what they do is, uh, it's the only thing they do well, they cheat. Their policies are no good, their government is no good, their management is no good, but they cheat like nobody can cheat. We're pleased to be joined today by a senator that I'm very proud of, actually. He ran and won and beat somebody who was tough. And uh, I recommended before that Laura run for that office, but Laura said, I have a beautiful family, a husband, and two of the most beautiful kids. You're going to meet one of them in a minute. Because we happen to name her Carolina. So she said, you know, Dad, I'd really, and we have a great gentleman named Ted Budd, a congressman, and he's fantastic. And so I said, Ted, you want to do it? I'm going to give you my endorsement. And I gave him the endorsement. And he has been a great senator. Ted Budd. Ted. Hi, Ted. He's done a fantastic job. Also, I was early with him, too. Dan Bishop, who is fantastic. Dan, you're looking good. You're looking good. Thank you, Dan. He's great. He's a warrior. David Rouser. David Rouser. David. We love David. And Anna Paulina Luna. I want to say it perfectly. Anna. She's so popular in Florida. I don't know. What's your next move? Stay. Just relax. But what's your next move? She's so popular and she's a warrior. They're all warriors. That whole group. North Carolina Republican Party chairman, he's been incredible, Jason Simmons. You know Jason? Thank you, Jason. How are we doing? Are we okay? Okay, we got to be okay. We got to win. This is a very important state. We win this state. I think it's going to be over fast. And we've only won it. We've won it every time, every time. So we're 5-0, and we're five and oh, including primaries. RNC chairman. So he was so good. And you know what he was good on? Stopping the cheating. Because when other places were winning, we're going to win 10 o'clock in the evening. Then at 3.02, a lot of ballots came in. But they didn't come in here. He had 603 lawyers, and he was tough as hell. And I said, that's the guy I want to run the RNC with Laura. They're doing an unbelievable job. And by the way, Laura's here. Would you stand up? Laura and Eric. Laura and Eric. I call it a super couple. That's a super couple. Thank you, Vera. And you're doing a great job, Laura. And he's doing a great job. He's the most subpoenaed human being in the history of the United States. Every day he gets a subpoena from Congress, from a crooked DA, a crooked AG, Democrat areas only, but man, he's tough as hell. He's become, he was such a nice young man just a little while ago. Now he's become like a hardened, tough. I said, is that my beautiful Eric? But it is, and he's still beautiful, and he's smart. And he is tough, and he's handled it so well. Eric, stand up separately. Come on. He is the most subpoenaed man in the history of our country. He got more subpoenas than the late, great Al Capone. Al Capone is like a baby compared to Eric. 
Thanks, Eric. Good. Great job, honey. Great job. And Robeson County Commissioner Michael, where's, where's Michael Watley, by the way? Where are you? Where are you? Michael? Stand up. We're counting on this guy. I didn't take him from any other state. I took him right from here. He was your party chairman. And it's true, though. You see about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then 302. You see these states that were easy wins. They sort of fell off because of COVID and lots of problems. There were lots of problems. But bottom line, they cheated and they fell off. But you know a place that didn't fall off? North Carolina. And it was headed up by that man. So, Michael, you better win or you're never going to be able to come back here. If he doesn't win, he won't be at RNC and he will no longer be in North Carolina. He'll be looking for a job. I think he's going to win. And that's what he's focused. I said, you know, we don't need votes. What we need is honesty in the election. If we have honesty, we have all the votes we need. And by the way, before I forget, I don't want to forget, you have about 30 of the most incredible women that follow me all over the place. And they're from North Carolina. Unbelievable. They follow me all over the country. They're from North Carolina. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice to finally be here? You don't have to travel to California, Texas. They travel all over the place. They're great. They're great and we love them and they're beautiful. I don't get the husband. They're all happily married, right? I don't quite get it. And here's another one. Look at that. They didn't want to sit with you. They wanted a better location. That's the boss. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great honor. And we also have front row Joes. They're all over the place. They stand on line for two, three days because they want to get that front row. Thank you very much. And they've seen plenty, and they were there, unfortunately, in Butler. That was a hell of a day. Sitting right where we were sitting right now, that was a hell of a day. That was something. Never let that happen. And also, Robeson County Commissioner and member of the Lumbee Tribe, a friend of mine and a friend of ours, John Cummings. Where's John? Thank you, John. John is a real, uh, a real supporter. We appreciate it very much. And we're going to make sure that you guys are okay because they have not been treated properly by this administration, as we know. Thank you. You can tell everybody. The Lumbee tribe has been wrongfully denied federal recognition for more than a century. Only a century? That's not that long. Centuries? Hundred years? That's not that long. But no, we're going to take care of it. We'll take care of it right at the beginning. All right? You can tell them. Biden and Obama promised remedy that they want to remedy the injustice, but they never did it. They broke their promise. And today I'm officially announcing that if I am elected in November, I will sign legislation granting the great Lumbee tribe the federal recognition that it deserves. Okay? You'll be all set. Say hello to And I got to know them. They're great. But... Unfortunately, we weren't in office when that happened, but uh, they treated him very badly. Thank you very much, John. We also have, and I said to, I alluded to it, a very important member of my family, far more important than Eric or Laura, and her name is Carolina, and she's beautiful, and she's sweet, and she doesn't know how evil life is. She hasn't experienced it yet. But she does know how great life is, and we want to make life great for everybody here, and we're going to do that. Can I ask Carolina to come up? Is that possible? <laughs> Carolina. This is the... She sat on my lap during the Republican convention. I can see the new senator when Ted someday 
He's going to say, sir, I've had it. I can't do it any longer. He's going to resign or leave, and we're going to have Carolina get in there and run. Anyway, would anybody like to meet Luke, her brother? Luke, come on up. Vote for Grandpa. Oh. Oh. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, honey. Great job. So cute. Oh, he doesn't want to get off the stage. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's got the gene. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. You know, I said, say MAGA. I whispered into his ear, so cute. I said, say MAGA. He said, vote for grandpa. He didn't care what I said. And that was actually much better, right? That was much better. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Carolina. Thank you, honey. What great kids, great people. That's a whole family is a wonderful family. Thank you. Thank you very much. And they're really helping. And Laura's all over the state. As you know, Laura grew up here and she loves the state. And she spends more time here than any place else. And she really loves the state. And so do we. It's been a very special experience. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for the help, too. Appreciate it. We are seven weeks away from the most important election in the history of our country, and Kamala Harris is the most radical left nominee ever to seek the presidency by far. The problem with her is nobody knew who the hell she was. When you say, oh, Harris is running, nobody knows the last name. I could say it today. If I just told Harris is running, you'd say, who the hell is Harris, right? Look at the people up front. They're friends of mine. They're tough, smart, rich people, actually. Very good. They've made a lot of money in this state. But when I say Harris, they say, who the hell is Harris? We have no, they know Kamala, but they don't know Harris. They know Comrade. They also know Comrade. And that's what she is. She's a comrade. But uh, Harris is running and she wants to open your borders. I'll, I'll tell you what. 21 million people, and that's really not including Godaways, came into this country. And they came in from a lot of bad places. Do you know that crime all over the world is down? In Venezuela, it's down 72% because they've taken their criminals and they've dumped them into the United States. It's down 70, and nothing good is going to happen with that. But all over the world, not just South America, crime is way down, way down. And what a shame that is, right? What a shame that is. And you see how bad it's getting when you look at what's going on with the migrants attacking villages and cities all throughout the Midwest in particular right now, but it's all over. But she's going to deliver rampant inflation and she wants to pack the Supreme Court, our great Supreme Court, instead of nine justices Kamala wants to bring it up. The other day, for the first time, I heard a number. It's got to be an odd number. They didn't like the number 13. So instead of going to 15, they went to 25. I understand they want 25. So they want to pack our courts immediately. And we can't ever let them do that. And we're going to stop them. And we have to stop them at the presidency. Ideally, we're going to do well, Ted, with the Senate. But we have to stop them with the presidency. We have to stop them. Ideally, you have some great congressmen and Congress people running. We have to stop them there. So 25 justices is what she's looking for. That's the real number so she can rig the system. She was an original creator of defund the police movement. Just so you know, she's been there for 15 years. If you're there for one week, you cannot vote for her for president, okay? Anybody that once even had a thought of defunding our great police law enforcement can no longer serve or even be thought of to be president. And I met a lot of the officers backstage are incredible, the job they do, and we appreciate it. She wants to defund the police. She wanted to do it in Minneapolis. That's why she picked this, this character, this weird guy. You know, he said weird. JD and I are not weird. We got a lot of problems, but we're not weird. He is a weird dude, isn't he though? So she got to meet him. He's a radical left lunatic. During the burning of Minnesota, they burned the whole state. Minneapolis was like a fire pit. 
And I saw a CNN announcer saying, well, this has been a friendly gathering. And behind him, the entire city was burning down. Nobody's ever seen it. It looked like World War II. No, we're not going to do it. And we're going to stop World War III, by the way. We're going to stop it. We're going to stop it cold. Kamala Harris vowed to abolish ICE under border czar Harris. Venezuelan gangs have taken over entire apartment buildings in Aurora, Colorado. The governor, the governor is petrified in Colorado. He's a liberal governor. He doesn't know what to do. The guy is so scared of these guys, and maybe you can't blame him. They have military-style weapons, AK-47 Supremes. They've got stuff that's unbelievable. They're young, they're tough, nasty people, and they got a lot of them. They came in from Venezuela in that case, in Aurora's case, and you have a great sheriff in town, but the sheriff is looking at this. He 